In this short video, we're going to talk about another topic from multivariable calculus, which we would need in a differential equations class, and it's called a partial anti-differentiation. If we recall the idea of partial derivatives, that we consider one of the variables as fixed or constant, for example, if we're taking the partial derivative of a function f with respect to x, we would consider y to be a constant and differentiate with respect to x. So if f of x comma y has the formula x squared plus y squared plus 2xy minus x sine y, then when we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, well, we're going to differentiate x squared as we would normally do in single variable calculus. We'll get 2x. The derivative or the partial derivative of y squared with respect to x is 0 because we consider y to be a constant, so y squared would also be a constant. So now we have 2 times y times x. The 2y is a multiplicative constant. So its partial derivative with respect to x is just 2y. And that's the same idea over here. Y we consider a constant. So sine y is considered a constant as well. So when I differentiate x sine y with respect to x, I just get sine of y. And of course, if I'm going to find the partial derivative with respect to y, I would treat x as a constant. And so the x squared would be considered a constant. So its partial derivative with respect to y would be 0. The partial derivative of y squared would be 2y. And the x is a constant here. And so the partial derivative of 2xy with respect to y is going to be 2x. And now x in the last term, x sine y, is considered a constant. So I'll have to take the partial derivative of sine y with respect to y, and then just multiply it times x. And that's how I get the x cosine y. Now, in partial antiderivatives, we're still going to hold one of the variables constant. So if I'm going to anti-differentiate or find a partial antiderivative of a function with respect to x, again, we treat y as a constant and anti-differentiate with respect to x. So just as we saw when we were taking partial derivatives, if we treat y as a constant, then any function of y is also considered a constant. So a formal definition of antiderivative or partial antiderivative would be a new function where the partial derivative of the new function with respect to that variable is the original function. So here's an example. Here I have a lowercase f of x comma y equaling x squared plus xy squared minus cosine y. And we'd like to find some partial antiderivatives because it's not unique. Just like in single variable calculus, when we find an antiderivative, then we have this constant of integration. And so when I find a partial antiderivative, it won't be unique unless we have additional information. So one partial antiderivative, well, I'm taking the antiderivative of x squared with respect to x. So that'll be one third x cubed, same as in single variable calculus. The y squared is a multiplicative constant. So I'm just going to anti-differentiate x and then multiply it by 1 squared 
antiderivative of x with respect to x is 1 half x squared. And then cosine of y I treat as a constant. So the antiderivative of a constant would be x times that constant. So that's one possible antiderivative. Of course, I could have a constant add any constant added on there. That would give me another antiderivative. But remember that if I'm anti-differentiating with respect to x, y and any function of y is also considered a constant. So I could add y squared plus sine of y. Those would be considered constants. And in fact, the most general antiderivative would have a plus g of y, indicating that I could put any function which depends only on y. So that would include having a constant there, or if a function like y squared plus sine y, or any other function of y. So when we anti-differentiate, we don't get a constant of integration, we get a constant function of integration. And that function is going to depend on what variable you're using for anti-differentiation. If you're using x, if you're anti-differentiating with respect to x, then your function is going to be g of y. If you were to anti-differentiate with respect to y, then your constant function would be a function, say, h of x. So let's compare antiderivatives of functions of a single variable to partial antiderivatives of functions of two variables. So in a single variable, I'm just going to have x squared plus ax minus b, where a and b are non-zero constants. So this most general antiderivative would be using the power rule, one-third x cubed plus one-half ax squared minus bx plus some constant of integration. And so here we have a constant of integration. Now let's look at a function of two variables. Now this has a similar structure to our function of a single variable. It starts with x squared. Then we have xy squared. And if I am anti-differentiating with respect to x, the y squared is just like the a in the single variable function. It's just a constant. And then minus b, b is a constant. Well, if I'm anti-differentiating with respect to x, minus cosine of y is a constant as well, or treated as a constant. So my most general partial antiderivative is going to look very much like what I've written here. One third x cubed plus one half x squared times my constant y squared, or the function I'm treating as a constant. And then over here, I have x times the constant. Again, cos cosine y is treated as a constant. So it's x times cosine of y. And then the difference is that I don't have a constant of integration. I have a constant function of integration, g of y. All right, so let's, again, let's have a little comparison here. If I have a function which is identically zero, then its most general antiderivative is just some constant a function of two variables, which is identically zero, then its antiderivative is, a, with respect to x, would be a function of y only. If my function of a single variable is a non-zero constant, then the most general antiderivative would be, well, uh, that constant times x plus the constant of integration. If my function of two variables equals a constant and I'm anti-differentiating with respect to x, then I'd have five times x plus some function of y. Now, there's a second case here, because remember, 
if I anti-differentiate with respect to x, then I could have a function of y on this side, and that would be the same as having a constant. I would just take whatever function of y I have, multiply it times x. So that's why I get the xy squared plus x sine of y. And again, my function, some other function of y only. That's my constant function of integration. And I may need to do a u substitution. So remember in single variable calculus, if I'm trying to calculate the antiderivative of sine of 2x, I could use u equals 2x and then du equals 2 dx. So dx will be half of du. That's where this half comes from. So the antiderivative of sine would be negative cosine. So the antiderivative of sine of 2x is negative cosine of 2x, but because of the u substitution, we get the multiplication, multiplication by 1 half. We have a very similar notion when we have a function of two variables, and we're finding the antiderivative with respect to x. We can make this u substitution. u would equal xy. So du is y dx, and dx would be 1 over y times du. So our antiderivative of sine of xy would be negative cosine of xy. And then I have the 1 over y, just like here I had 1 over 2. I have 1 over y as a multiplier. Uh, we haven't talked that much about antiderivatives with respect to y. Uh, so let's just look at the same idea now. If I had a function of y, single variable function of y, which equals 0, its antiderivative would be just a constant. If I have a function of two variables, which is identically 0, and I take its antiderivative with respect to y, I'll get a function of x, because when I anti-differentiate with respect to y, any function which only has x in it would be treated as a constant. So if I had a function of two variables, which equals 5, its antiderivative with respect to y now will be 5y, again, plus some function h, which only depends on x. And uh, here I have another example. I have a function of y and then a function which depends only on x. So the function that only depends on x will be treated as a constant. So the antiderivative of y squared with respect to y is one-third y cubed. And the antiderivative of sine x with respect to y would be y times sine of x. And then I have to add some function h of x, which depends on x only. And just like I did uh, when I was anti-differentiating with respect to x, when I anti-differentiate with respect to y, I may need to make a u substitution. So here, uh, and when I take the partial derivative of xy with respect to y, I get x. So dy would be 1 over x du. And so the antiderivative of sine xy with respect to y would be negative cosine xy, and then multiplied by 1 over x. And of course, adding the h of x as my constant function. So let's look at an example. We're going to try to find a function f, which depends on x and y, which satisfies the conditions that the partial of f with respect to x equals e to the y minus cosine of x, while the partial of f with respect to y equals x times e to the y plus 2y. So this is something that we're going to need to do often in our differential equations class. So let's go through the procedure. 
we're going to start by anti-differentiating the partial derivative with respect to x. We'll anti-differentiate it with respect to x. And that will give us a candidate for our function f, which depends on x and y. So anti-differentiating ey minus cosine of x with respect to x gives me x times e to the power of y. Remember, e to the power of y we treat as a constant. Minus sine of x plus some function g, which only depends on y. And now what we're going to do is use this candidate formula, or the formula that we just found, and we're going to take its partial derivative with respect to y. So we're going to take the partial derivative of x e to the y with respect to y, and then minus, we're going to subtract the partial derivative with respect to y of sine of x, and then we'll take the uh, partial derivative with respect to y of g of y. Now, I wrote here as just standard derivatives because uh, that's what we're thinking. We're differentiating with respect to y. All right, so what terms do we get? Well, from the first term, the antiderivative of e to the y is just e to the y. We're taking the antiderivative with respect to x. The derivative of sine x, when I'm differentiating with respect to y, is zero. We treat sine of x as a constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero. And then the derivative of a, an unknown function g of y with respect to y would just be g prime of y. So remember, we first got a formula, a candidate formula for our function f. We differentiated the formula that we got with respect to y. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to our given formula for the partial of f with respect to y. And we're going to set these two formulas equal to each other, the one that's given to us and the one that we calculated from our first anti-differentiation. And so now when I set these equal to each other, uh, certainly on the left-hand side, we should be able to find the same terms on the right-hand side, all except for whatever's left over will be equal to g prime. So then we're left with g prime of y equals 2y. We anti-differentiate to get g of y equals y squared. So now we can complete our function for f of x, y. We got a candidate by anti-differentiating the partial derivative with respect to x, but it had this unknown g of y function. We use the information from the partial derivative with respect to y to determine what that function is. And now we can put everything together to get our function f of x, y equals x e to the y minus sine of x plus y squared. So let's look at another function here, another example. Kind of put everything out here. Let's go through it one step at a time. Again, what do we just start with? We start by anti-differentiating our partial derivative with respect to x. And we're going to anti-differentiate that with respect to x. So for the first term, I have a y squared. That's just a constant multiplier. Find the antiderivative of cosine of x. That would be sine of x. And I'll still multiply that times y squared. In the second term, the y is just a constant multiplier. So I'm going to go ahead and anti-differentiate 3x squared with respect to x. I'll get x cubed, and that's still multiplied by y. Now, in the last term, I only have an x, so anti-differentiate 2x to get x squared. And then, of course, I have to add some function of y only, which would be treated as a constant. 
So now the next step would be to take this candidate function and go ahead and take the partial derivative with respect to y. So sine of x would be considered a constant, so I just get 2y sine of x. The x cubed is considered a constant, and so the partial derivative with respect to y of y is just 1, so I get just x cubed. The partial derivative of x squared with respect to y is 0 because we treat x as a constant. And then the derivative of g of y with respect to y is just g prime of y. So now we take this partial derivative of f with respect to y and set it equal to the given partial derivative with respect to y. So both sides have a 2y sine of x. Both sides have a minus x cubed. So what's left over is g, par, g prime of y is the natural log of y. Now, you probably don't remember the antiderivative of the natural log of y. And the way that we found it uh, is using integration by parts. We actually say that the u function is natural log of y dv is dy, and so then du is 1 over y dy, and v is y. So you remember it's uv minus integral d, I mean u times v minus integral v du. And so that's how I get the y, natural log of y, minus y times 1 over y dy. So that'll just be the antiderivative of 1, which is y. So we're not going to use this constant of integration here because we're just asked to find a function, not the most general function. So we found the uh, now the value. This is going to be g of y. It'll be y, natural log of y minus y. So we can now complete our function. So the function, a one function, which would be uh, satisfying these two conditions, would be the y squared sine of x. So the same ones that I found originally, minus x cubed, minus x squared, and now I replace g of y with the function I found by anti-differentiating natural log of y. And that is y natural log of y minus y. So I hope you found this useful. We're going to be using this uh, throughout the course here in differential equations.